Market's clearly at a crossroads here, both fundamentally and technically. We bring in Professor Charles Nenner uh, on the telephone to talk about some of the key levels that uh, we'll be facing here. Uh, Professor Nenner, thanks for coming on here. Uh, as far as the S&P 500, we'll call it uh, the benchmark for equities right now, uh, you have some short-term targets here that, uh, whether they uh, hold or break, are pretty uh, close by. Once we start breaking down from our upside price target of 3049, we've got a downside price target of 1139. So that's about 200 points lower. We're not too far from that. We saw 1160 already. Uh, I think it's going to hold around 1139, uh, have a bounce. These long term cycles, as I wrote in my morning update, continue down into October, and my system is very bearish. There's one caveat in the whole thing, that if you look at, uh, at the statistics, there's something interesting, that in this phase of the presidential cycle, plus the fact that the first five days of January were up and the whole month of January were, was up, for the last 100 years, 90% of the time, the market ends up for that year. So that's, that's a statistic I, I cannot disregard. So um, I'm a bit in doubt about that, but my system definitely are very, uh, very showing a lot of risk, and we're totally out of the market after reaching upset price target uh, about 200 points higher. Leaving aside the indicator that works 90% of the time every time, what about 11.39? It, the market seems really squirrely, really afraid here for the first time probably since 2009. Do you think we slice through that in a panicky market? Could we get to 1,100? Could we get below that? I realize you're in cash. But how, sus how susceptible is the market to breaking much lower? Well, it, I just work with my models. We have been working very well for 50 years for Goldman Sachs, and uh, they show 1139 probably is going to hold, and we'll see a bounce from there. I just think, don't think that it's a serious bounce, so I wouldn't really like to buy that bounce. Uh, what we like to buy instead is if you're not long yet the bounce. I know it sounds a bit uh, overstretched. I would still use a correction the bounce to go along the bounce. I think that's where the money is still being made. This is a, an unusual conundrum that you're facing, Professor, where you say you trust your own research except for this one outlier, and that keeps you out of the market except for things like Research in Motion or Best Buy. Well, I tell you, we, uh, we had a uh, whole research on these two stocks. And uh, when I think uh, RIM was 75, we said it goes to 222, and that's where we want to buy it. Um, and I strictly go with the models. It could be that it was preemptive, uh, the correction in RIM, and from 22, the, uh, the risk is not so huge. And we had a very low price target on, on Best Buy of 25, which at the time seemed to be uh, unrealistic. And uh, I tell people to, uh, to buy a small, uh, small position in that. There are special cases. If they go through a price target, 22 for RIM and 25 of Best Buy, then I'm going to sell them again. But I'm just... Just very interesting because they really exactly hit the downside price targets. That's fascinating, but let's talk about breaking through the, the price targets. You said if they go below that, you're going to sell them again. What is your sell discipline? How much slack do you give these things? Is it a specific percentage or, again, to the S&P, if we go below 1139, I know that you're in cash, but a lot of the folks watching out there aren't. Do you start selling it again? Say you put some cash to work, even though you're yeah, advising folks not to. We'd be very strict. The model is very exact, which means is if you would go through it more than half a percent, it's already too much. So mm -hmm. I would say four or five percent, uh, sorry, four or five S&P points below the target is already a problem. And uh, on the stocks, I wouldn't take more than a 50 percent risk because it, these, these targets are very exact. Are they intraday or closing levels? They're closing. Okay, so four or five points closing below 11.35 on the S&P. You're we'll pulling the rip cord and hanging out just in cash. It's very troublesome, as you said. Again, I say my fundamental insights are not more than from somebody else. I don't see any idea why you should be along the market. What I see is why you should be along the bond market, because, as you maybe know, I've been calling still for deflation, and I think not recession. I think we could go in a, in a depression the next couple of years. Um, so it's going to be very difficult to, uh, to make money. Even in the bank, you don't make money. But I don't think you should take the risk to go long stock just because you don't get any rate of return when you're in a bond market. All right. Charles Nenner, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Professor Nenner.